You're now tuned into Sykes Weekly Nerf Dosage. I'm going to let y'all in on a little secret. Making an elite deploy is a real bitch. Look at this, look at, look at the whole mess on my table. It's the elite Never mind. Hey, what's up, good people? Welcome to episode 61 of Pwned. I actually have a lot of things that I want to showcase to you guys, but I shall limit it to about three segments for this particular video, you know, just so that I'll always have more content and I'll keep you guys waiting for new stuff, you know, and I won't bore you guys to death by talking too much. So anyway, the first part of the video, which is this annotation over here, will be a bunch of whole random stuff, uh, like I got an orange stripe, etc. Okay, and this particular uh, annotation over here is uh, my zombie strike crossfire. I know many people have done a review, but I just wanted to share it with you. And this annotation over here is this thing called the strikeout target set or strikeout target by Nerf, and uh, yeah. That's just the most interesting, I think. So let us, uh, either you click away or we shall just move on. And I think I will just move on so annotations away. Okay. Got myself an orange strife. Actually, I got myself a pair. So uh, thanks to both Nubi and I know um, you guys have never heard of him before on this channel, but his name is uh, Crimson Demon. But anyway, yeah, uh, thanks to both of them for uh, helping me out with this. So... I've already, you know, it's still in, the, in this package, but this one I actually kind of attached the uh, Nubi's LED kit, you know, the LED light kit, yeah. Uh, I took it out from the blue strife because, yeah, I wanted this to be here because, you know, it's orange zip tie and everything. But, um, yeah, I don't think that, um, you know, many of you have actually seen uh, an orange strife on YouTube. So here you go, it's an orange strife and it fires up to 75 feet. Uh, I won't be doing a review on this, I'll just do an unboxing so that you guys can actually see. And uh, unlike the blue strife, it doesn't come in a closed box, it's an open package kind of thing. So you actually have six elite darts over here with an elite clip. And this is the first time I actually have... Is it the first time? I don't know. I don't know if it's the first time, but uh, well, it's a half clear six dart clip. I don't even recall myself actually having one of these. I know it should have come with the strife though. Uh, never mind. So yeah, uh, the back of the box just tells you about the strife and all that stuff that you don't really need to know. So um, grab my cutters and just open this up real quick, like so. Seems to be tight at another spot. I can't really. Wow, are you serious? They actually have the twine running inside the clip. Oh no, that's on the strife itself. Let me just reach down in that. This is amazing. Look, there's this twine over here. It's stuck on the inside. See that? So, <laughs> okay, uh, I'm going to be careful with my fingers. And, uh, and there we go. Okay, should be it. No, come on, come on, come on, come on. Don't do this, come on. I know that Hasbro kind of wants you to be able to open this up nicely at home and then you have to suppose to separate the side and everything but uh, I'm just lazy is there a reason why I think I think there might be because uh, I think there might be an instruction manual on the inside but I'm just lazy and I just wanna get this out on camera so you guys okay here we go uh, wow okay so anyway it's an orange strife and uh, still got a six dot clip I'll put this aside so we can actually kind of uh, I guess kind of compare and uh, well if you just have the same you just uh, this deactivate this Is that it? No, not really. Is that, is that it? Is that it? Ah, okay, I deactivated the switches, so... Okay, so it works. Ah, uh, it works. I can't say it works. I haven't even tested it out yet, but this is it. This is the orange strife. Comparison with the standard blue strife. It's exactly the same, just in a different colorway. You know how Hasbro likes to milk the uh, cow and uh, just keep milking these things. But honestly though, um, right, to be fair, an orange strife is cool, but I think it's more of a novelty. If you think about it, this actually looks a bit cooler. I, I, I don't know about you guys, but okay, okay. In my opinion, this looks a bit cooler. Um, it's because, you know, you always see the same thing going around. So when you find something a little bit different, you find it's more unique. Yeah. So they actually uh, took the effort to actually put a little, uh, you know, white colors uh, band of paint over here on the battery compartment whereas for this one you have the end strike you need in black so yeah uh, apart from that honestly though it's got the same uh, digital camo 
texture to the shell so basically it's just almost an exactly one for one reshell and uh, they didn't they don't seem to have created a new mold for this yep I uh, just thought I'd share that with you guys all right so next update I wanted to share with you guys is about my um, about the fast mags that I actually showcased to you guys uh, in one of the previous episodes please kick this invitation over here to go check out that fast mag thingy but here we go I just realized oh wait let me get a clip so I can I just realized, and sorry, I, I have to keep on taking out my red long shot because I'm still working on it. As you can see, I have this uh, four barrel attachment, and this is actually the well, Tia Yi's scar barrel. And I kind of created like a little uh, muzzle or silencer looking thingy, but actually, it's more of a reinforcement for the you know, for the scar on the outside. So, you know, no one can really get to it. If I were to remove the couple on the outside, well, looks exactly like that, okay? Uh huh, so it just sits inside like so there we go perfect fit okay that's a scar barrel for you and uh, what is interesting is that I tried to attach a fast mag onto the arm of a uh, shotgun grip and I'm using the Explorer shotgun grip mind you my shotgun grip arms are a little bit thicker than normal because I actually have a layer of a uh, carbon fiber decal on it but uh, it works fine and uh, like to show you guys that it's so you can still prime it doesn't even affect performance at all whatsoever. You, the only downside is that it moves a bit up and down, but uh, I don't think that's you know much of a cause of concern. Here's the thing: you just get a clip and you, well, you basically have to aim it right and you push it all the way in, and there, fast mag on the go. So you can actually, you know, fire like this. And if you need to change the mag, just take out this clip, throw it away, take out this one instead, and touch it in, like so, like that. So imagine in this situation, you kind of take it out and then you just put an empty clip inside so the good thing about it is you can actually attach a pair so you can actually have one more here and uh, you could also have another one here but then if you do that then it's kind of difficult for you to reach your clip you know what I'm trying to say yeah too far front and uh, it gets in the way of your hand unless you have it on the other side just a little trinket that I thought I want to share with you guys yeah right uh, that's about it for this part now on to the next part of the video Ta -da! Got myself a zombie strike crossfire. Uh, I took out the bow arms because I thought they was kind of stupid. All you have to do is just uh, undo the knot on the bow itself, and then you get. Well, it's behind the camera, and I'm lazy. Go get it. But yeah, uh, I didn't want to do an unboxing because I think that there are quite a lot of good unboxing videos of this particular blaster online right now. And uh, funny thing, I got this off Taobao via I shall not say who, but you know who you are. And it has a little marking over here. It's actually written out of the box. I took it out and it looks like this blaster has been handled before. Has been handled before. Has been, been used before. A lot of uh, minor scuffs, a lot of scratches on it. Like as if it's seen quite somewhere. Or you know, some testing wasn't really handled very well. And I have this little number marking over here. I'm not too happy about that. Seal on this thing is not fantastic to check it out. This air is just intact, but look. It's... It's worse than a uh, stock Night Finder, I would say. Yeah, I'm using the word Night Finder, okay? It's, it's not a fire shot. I'm talking about Night Finder. But anyway, uh, you know, ergonomics of this thing, I think that this grip is a bit big. Doesn't feel so comfortable. That's my review on it. I'm giving you my review now. <laughs> the trigger is kind of cool though, with all the slots and everything. Okay, the grip is kind of cool too. Look, it's got like slots cut out through. But it doesn't feel as comfy. And, um... I mean, this is okay, you know, it's an okay size, but it doesn't make sense to have a, a guard over here. And, um, you know, I hate this priming mechanism. Why do you have to... You know, the blaster is already so front heavy. And imagine if you have the bow arms over here, you have darts more on top of that. And uh, everything's so front heavy, as you can see, it's front heavy. You have, have to aim it and prime it this way. I didn't really like that. Of course, this really looks like a real-life charging handle, especially on the M16. And I thought that, that was cool, but still, it's kind of difficult for you to do this and then fire. You know what I'm trying to say? Unless you want to do this all the time. But this is more like a bolt action. It makes more sense that way. So I think a shotgun grip would uh, would would be good actually. And uh, I already have an idea to make it a shotgun grip, but I won't share it with you guys yet. Not not yet. I will. Okay, but not yet. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. Apart from that, I think let's just give it a firing demonstration, shall we? Oh no! Actually, wait. I shall leave the final demonstration to the next part of the video. So uh, I'll continue talking about the aesthetics of this blaster first. Uh, apparently it is 
almost exactly the same as a rough cut, how it works. A rough cut is two sides, where this is just one. And um, I believe that there are some channels on YouTube, I'll try and put an annotation somewhere because I can't remember who it was, I don't want to give credit wrongly. But someone already put up the internals. In fact, I think a few people, a few people put up the internals of this particular blaster. And uh, they have all, you know, um, commented that the internals seem to be the same as a rough cut. So this is literally just half a rough cut uh, without the pump action. You know, of course it's a bit more thin, a little bit more streamlined, a bit more sleek, and uh, it's more comfortable. You can attach a stock of whatever, any kind that you want, and this looks to be like the old end strike tech rail, as opposed to the you know zombie strike uh, snatch fire and hammer shot uh, tech rail. So yeah, thought that was pretty cool. Uh, all in all, uh, I think that this blaster is not really worth the money to buy because we have so much uh, and so many more better options out there uh, as opposed to you know just getting this, it's like a four shot, uh, weirdly uncomfortable priming crossbowish kind of thing. A lot of people keep likening it to, you know, you could be Daryl Dixon from The Walking Dead because every time Norman Reedus goes out and he does nerf stuff, he's usually given this, I think so far I've seen him with uh, cross, uh, crossfire, strike fires, crossfires, is it crossfire? What is this? Do I, have I been saying this wrong? What is this? Wait a minute! This blaster doesn't even have its name on the shell at all! <laughs> oh man! It, uh, it's strange! I thought all blasters would have like the marking of its own name on the shelf. This doesn't have any whatsoever, it's completely... Maybe it's on the bow arms, now I have to go get it, see? No, right? Because I'm looking at the bow arms right now and it says nothing to do with the blaster's name. Oh yeah, so these are the bow arms, it's supposed to go on like this. Uh, 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 yeah, like this on the top too. Okay, and of course the strings go through this particular primary handle over here. But yeah, I think it's a crossfire. Sorry guys, this is a crappy review, but yeah, this is my review. It's not too comfortable unless you have a shoulder stock and uh, yeah, you guys understand. Uh, with this amount of money, I could just bought another, say, Retaliator. I think that would make a lot more sense, you know? So, just my two cents. Moving on to the next part of the video, where I will also be showcasing the firing demonstration of this bastard, okay? Alright, the moment that you guys have been waiting for in this particular video, before I show you what it is or what it looks like, I have to give Kenji a lot of credit for this. Thank you bro, this was his Christmas present to me and this is the strikeout target set uh, by Nerf. However, it's not just Nerf alone, Nerf alone, Nerf alone. it is also uh, I think in conjunction with Takara Tomi, check it out. So this apparently was a Japan only release and the box and everything, the cardboard is all like totally different from the usual Nerf products. It's really thin, like uh, like how the Japanese boxes are for their a lot of their uh, merchandise and products. But anyway, I can't really make out all these words. I'm pretty bad at reading Japanese. Uh, it's uh, under the Elite line. It's actually telling you that you can use both streamlines and suction tip darts. However, I am able to read this word and it says Nerf. Okay, you pronounce it as Nerf. Strike out to target to. All right, so this is the back of the box. It shows you this. Shows you the contents of what's inside. Like really, like you know, this reminds me of the box art of Zoids, right? You guys know what Zoids are, right? It reminds me of the box art of Zoids. The side, and this side. It's just that's just it. Uh, get my knife. You know, cut the knife, and I will be unboxing this for you guys. And we'll be let's you know let's check this out. What's on the inside of it? And uh, to show you guys how thin this box is, look. There, that's how thin it is. It's like totally different. It doesn't even feel like a Nerf product whatsoever. Now, this cardboard, however, does does feel like it's made from Hasbro, but this is one piece. Okay, we got this uh, tray with some orange plates. Okay, I'm gonna put this side like here. Uh, got this little frame. Put this here. Got an instruction manual with some stickers and more cardboard. Even more cardboard. And that's about it, that's all. So it's a little thin box. Right, uh, let's just open this up and see what's inside of this particular packet over here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Take it out. Empty packet. 
throw it away. A bunch of stickers ranging from numbers 1 through 9. Okay. Uh, yeah. And uh, this, yeah, this is the uh, instruction manual, instruction booklet, how you actually install this thing. Uh, it's all in Japanese, but uh, the Japanese, uh, you know, they have an innate way of explaining stuff to you. Oh, they actually showcase three different blasters on the back over here, which is namely the strong arm. Oh, strong arm, fire strike, and uh, is it this one? Yeah, retaliator. Yeah, so um, just telling you that you should have nine orange targets. Let's go check it out. One frame. I got one frame over here. My nine orange targets over here. Sticker and the base. Okay, sticker and the base. So I'm supposed to take the stickers and stick it on to the targets. Right, and I'm going to do that. But let me just show you guys what the target looks like first. Okay, I've uh, got this packet out. All packed so nicely. Alright. So I'm really trashing this plastic over here. And, uh... It's a thin plastic that feels a bit like the battery covers of, uh you know, your blasters. However, I am surprised that it's really shiny, as you can tell, by the reflection of the light. Um, yeah, so I got nine of these, and I'm supposed to stick stickers on them. I'll put this aside first, so I can show you guys the tray, or the stand. There you go. Oh wow, they even got slots for you to put your darts. That's quite cool. So, nothing else inside here. It's just the blue stand. Uh, pretty thin plastic. These, I believe, actually hold some darts. Let me just get a dart or two. See if it fits. Yeah, it does look. Doesn't really drop up, so it's pretty good. Uh, for fun, okay, for fun. I'll just put some darts here. Got like a few elite darts, got a few rebel darts. Okay, and uh, do I have zombie strike guys? Yeah, I do. Okay, so I'll grab some zombies. These four actually came with the uh, crossfire. I will be using 3E. The foam doesn't feel very good, eh? I'm a bit disappointed with the zombie strike darts foam. It feels kind of. It doesn't feel dense at all. Alright, here we go. Get that one back in there. Throw away this little packet. So I have like three elite, the usual blue elite streamlines. I have three darts from the Rebel series and I have three darts from the Zombie Strike series. Let's take a look at the stickers and these number plates and see how we're gonna line them up. Oh shoot, I'm sorry. Right, uh, so basically, well there's there's grooves in here at the side, so if you screw that up then uh, yeah, I don't know what to say. Really thin stickers. Um, and strike. Now, and strike. Never mind. E oh, irito. Now, and strike. Irito. Sto. Never mind. I give up. Sorry. So, anyway, uh, yeah, number one, and you gotta fit it here like that. So, I'm just gonna. You know, me being me, I'm just gonna do this real quick. Come on, come on, I'm gonna put it as center as I can, as beautifully as I can. Okay, more or less. Yeah, so, uh, completed target should look something like this. Alright, so I'm gonna go ahead and stick uh, the other targets with all their respective numbers, and I'll get back to you guys in a short while, so please bear with me. So I'm done attaching the stickers for all these nine um, targets and I already have the frame over here as you can see things are moving around. I've attached some of them and I'll be continuing to attach these on camera so you guys can see actually how you do it. Basically you grab your uh, target and you can see this little uh, C-shaped clip. You want to clip it onto one of the slots in between the frame over here like so. Till you hear a click like that. So this number five, let's put it over here. And then uh, it's number four, put it over here. And last but not least, the number one. Now I think what's cool is that you can actually, you know, choose to kind of rearrange the numbers any way you want, so it gives you a bit more like um, challenge, like, oh, you gotta hit number two now, so you shift it around, something like that. 
but basically make everything stand up like so so all these targets are all upright and then I guess when a dart hits it on impact it's supposed to drop like so yeah uh, I wonder how this will stand against powerful blasters but anyway I'll be using the uh, strike to cross fire yeah I'm sorry so yeah on the base itself you'll see these grooves and they're supposed to fit the legs of this thing over like so this way out and it will stand like that so this gives it enough balance and if I'm not wrong the idea is for you to fire a dart and this will drop so if this target actually drops it will drop inside here if not the dart will might drop I don't really know but uh, yeah I know my desk is really messy because of the stupid deploy and shit but you know what I'm just gonna put it here like that and I'll be just firing at it for you guys okay I'm gonna grab myself all these darts from the dart holder starting with the zombie strike ones then I go to the rebel ones I mean I only need four for the blaster but I will just use all nine and uh, hope that I won't screw up okay so here we have the zombie strike crossfire again loaded up with darts like so first elite darts and then uh, rebel dart like that okay I'll be standing behind the camera this time about here and I'll be firing it at that target over there okay let's see how this goes uh, it's honestly not very far because you know my room isn't that fantastically big but I uh, hope to never hit chopper because chopper is such a poor thing chopper in the corner over there so here we go okay so uh, first let's use this pseudo scope thingy I just stand at the side so you guys can see the, the blaster also in ca on camera. Okay, and I'll be trying to fire off at the number two, okay? Here we go, number two, let's go. It didn't even drop, that sucks. Performance of this blaster is lousy. Let's try it again. Number two, okay, here we go, number two. Now I hit the number five instead. You know why? Because the darts are traveling lower and lower, right? So, next dart, I'm going to aim for the number two. And I'm going to aim it higher, so I'll do this. I hit the number two's base again. Damn, that sucks. It went all the way through. So <laughs> accuracy at this range sucks. Right, so here we go. Another four dots in this thing. Okay, and uh, try again. I got the number one, but it missed. Got the number one again, but it missed. I got the number one again, but it didn't drop. I got the number one again, but it didn't drop. That's not right. <laughs> Can you imagine? I actually got all of these on camera. This stupid retarded shot on camera. That sucks though. Like, okay, I'm just gonna fire off another three darts, okay? Look. Uh, let's try and go for number six over here. Number six did not drop. Let's try and go for number four. Number four dropped. Okay, and I'm uh, trying to go for number three, and it did not drop. You know what? I give up. Armed with an assortment of darts inside a six dart clip, put it into a remedy metal long shot, and I know that this is gonna be overkill. Oh wow! Look, it's not even, it's not even loading properly. It's not even the clip itself. I don't know. Anyway, here it goes. Make sure this thing goes all the way in, and uh, okay, first darts fed. And I'm a bit afraid to fire it at such a close range, so I'm going to stand even further behind the camera. Alright, I'm aiming for the number 8. Hopefully I'll hit it at this range, I don't know. So here we go. 3, 2, 1. Oh man, I hit the number 7 and it flew off. <laughs> Did you guys see that? Okay, so next start. Here we go. Got the number 8, nailed that. I'm gonna go for number nine now. Oops, I got the number six instead, but it's a good clean shot. Try for the number nine again. Oh shit. <laughs> okay, you know what? I'm not gonna fire off at the number one, two, and three because I'm afraid that it will hit my monitor and I don't want that happening. It looks like this dart thing is, uh, or this target thing is actually pretty fun. Uh, I'll have to find uh, some way that I'll actually be practically using it or using it in a more, more practical situation but as of now this is not so practical as you can see uh, too much shit in my room or my desk 
and I'll be risking damaging my monitor and my nice speakers and stuff. Because I mean, come on, you guys remember how the dart actually broke the foam over there? It's not uh, very nice. So yeah, this was the uh, strikeout target set by Nerf and um, I believe that Kenji actually asked a friend in Japan to help him get it. Uh, I, I think so, but in any case, thank you so much Kenji. This is a really fun, uh, you know, accessory to have. Get this back and I'll stick it back in place. If you guys, you know, look hard on Taobao, I'm pretty sure you can find this, uh, you know, accessory. I'm going to call it an accessory. Not really much of a mission pack or mission kit. Alright, so uh, yeah. Here you go. This is what it looks like. Bam! Right, now on to the last part of the video where I'm just going to talk some stuff. So I guess more or less uh, all of us have actually heard about Coop's uh, retirement from Nerf and his departure from this hobby. And, um, uh, well, I guess I just wanted to say, take care Coop. Uh, Coop has been an inspiration to me, um, you know, for a pretty long time. I've always looked at his mods, as, and especially his paint jobs, as uh, one of the cleaner ones around. And in this hobby so far, I've seen people come and go, or people who have been around before I did. And uh, when I started getting into it, they started to leave. One of the most memorable ones was actually Papatachi. And uh, there were some people who silently disappeared, like uh, Archangel, was it? I don't know, it's a for, uh, for, Forsaken Angel. You know, um, yeah, but I'm still in this hobby. And uh, you know, sometimes people step out and come back like Solvent Brisbane Nerf Club. I'm glad that you're back. Uh, glad that you didn't you didn't leave. The most I guess the most uh, heart wrenching one for me is thus far was uh, the Nerf mods and reviews block closing down. Cause yeah, I guess I was a part of it, and I didn't really do much about it. I just kept on focusing on my channel. You know, uh, cause you know I'm not much of a blogger anyway. But you know, I'm just digging out for excuses. Whatever it is, uh, I'm I'm pretty sure that every one of us has like you know, um, has life in the way. And right now, my life permits me to actually have this ability to be, you know, part of this hobby to still partake in, in 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 how do I say? Partake in what's that word? Activities. Yeah, I can. It, I guess my life still lets me partake in activities that are related to this hobby and I'm very happy and I'm very blessed and I'm very lucky that I'm doing this. I'm still making videos because I feel like, you know, it's kind of fun actually make videos and laugh at myself, you know, when I've got nothing better to do at home. So I'm actually kind of surprised that you guys are actually on this journey with me. I've got about 3,000 subscribers which is a far cry from what Coop has. Coop has like what, 37,000 and I'm not aspiring to be another Coop as you guys know. I could be a sellout, you know what I mean, like a sellout, like just make like Two, three minute videos of every single thing as po you know, as much as possible you know and title it like very um, controversial or very attractive names like oh the ultimate mod or some shit I could do that uh, I've, I've actually tried it out once or twice before I'm pretty sure you guys know right when I actually showcased to you my SC9K I actually call it the rarest nerf blaster and immediately I had almost like 16,000 hits like just overnight but when I changed the title back into like a, one of the or possibly one of the rarest and then you know it just changed so I, I did conduct my experiments here and there and uh, well at the end of the day I guess I'm comfortable doing this the long style videos and with you guys actually you know chilling out and watching me whether or not you actually watch or listen I don't know but thank you for your support and it really means a lot like 3,000 people actually subscribe to me who actually want to you know don't mind actually tuning into my episode every week and just you know listening to me and whatever information I have to share with you guys. I know that I churn out quite a lot of uh, product information for you guys, so I'm, I'm really lucky that I have that ability to do so. You know, a lot of developments uh, in the Nerf community by people, so I'll keep doing what I do, but uh, I'd, like to, I'd like to wish Coop all the best. Coop, uh, I don't, it's not so much about me actually, it was all about Coop, so sorry about it. Coop, uh, you know, we all gotta do what we gotta do someday, and um, just take care of yourself. If you ever come back to this hobby, like what I told Papatachi, if you ever come back to this hobby, this hobby will always be here for you. And uh, keep inspiring people, whatever you do. Yeah? Uh, Alright, I guess that brings me to the end of this episode of Pwned. Uh, this weekend is the Human vs. Zombies weekend, and I'm really excited about it. Um, what am I going to bring? Uh, well, if I can finish up this Elite Deploy, I will bring this, and I'll bring my Alpha Trooper uh, as a backup. Or I might ask for permission whether I could use a 
slightly modified long shot. The rules are a bit different from where you guys are because you know we're doing it for the first time you're trying to make everything controlled I mean more control over everything so you know no casualties and stuff just trying out yeah but I'm really looking forward to it I will be bringing my trusty uh, Polaroid camera I've got my uh, I've got my what do you call that guys class 10 yeah I've got my class 10 SD card it's working fine so don't see an issue with this. I've already got a new camera mount and everything thanks to Area 503 and I'm looking forward to bringing you guys some interesting footage. Of course, if I turn into a zombie, then I won't be able to use this unless I strap it onto my helmet or, or my body or something. I, I don't know. I, I'll find something for you guys, okay? Uh, apart from that, thank you so much for sticking throughout this video, guys. I know I talked a lot and I did a lot of stupid stuff in this video. But you guys have a great week ahead. And uh, before I go, uh, remember I told you about this little sub segment of poem that I want to do it's coming out really soon so stay tuned for that okay <laughs> yeah till the next week guys I will see you again take care and if you like this video hope you guys give me a thumbs up if you're not subscribed maybe you could consider subscribing to my channel stay cool stay fresh have a great week ahead and I will see you again on the next episode of Pwn peace <laughs>